This is a dirty hole. It's one of many in this dirty girl. She's only 25 years old, but she's been ridden hard and put away wet, and not in the good way. She's a 1995 Sea-Doo XP720 that I bought on the list of Craig for $400. This is her restoration story. Or at least part of it. It's the beginning of September now, so I have about two months before it sleets for a month and then drops below zero and refuses to snow for the rest of the winter. Welcome to Vermont. That means I have two months to pull the engine, gut the entire hull, strip the crusty old mats and graphics, clean the entire hull inside and out, restore the faded plastic, install new mats and graphics, replace all the fuel lines, fabricate a custom jet ski trailer, and make a cart for dragging her around the yard. This is going to be a busy video. The previous owner had flooded the hull with a lovely oil water sludge, so step one is to yank all the engine bits out. And by yank, I mean carefully remove while meticulously taking photos, starting with the airbox and flame arrestor, then moving on to the carburetors. Let's just take a second to appreciate how absolutely disgusting this is. I mean, look, there's even mold growing on the fuel lines. It's like blue cheese, but really not at all, actually. To get the carbs off, I had to remove the choke linkage and the throttle linkage, and cut a few fuel lines since I didn't have the special click clamp pliers for these naughty boys. I bought some later. It was definitely worth it. Adios, carburitos. Pop off the water lines, and next is the exhaust. Don't have the correct gasket? Just use an offensive amount of RTV. Tuned pipe head is off. This is it on. This is it off. One of these nuts was a pain in the ass to access, but I don't remember which one, so never m Wait, what's that? Is that a zip tie that hasn't been flush cut? I can't- No. No! Oh man, we have some serious work to do. <sighs> okay, exhaust is out. Pro tip, use protection for all your holes, especially the big ones. One final step before the engine can come out. Drive shaft removal. And everyone knows what that means. Yank the water pooper. So this steery, tilty nozzle bit comes off first, then the impeller housing, and you're left with a rusty drive shaft, which coincidentally was my nickname in high school. Drive shaft is out, engine is not, so let's make it so it is. Okay, now it is. The following images are incredibly disturbing, so grab your children and force them to watch. It may teach them a lesson about correctly caring for their shit. You may be wondering, what is this an image of? How am I supposed to interpret the oh dear god that's nasty? Yep, that's an injection oil swimming pool in the bottom of the hull. Not to mention this nasty rat's nest of wiring and tubing, and this lovely oily giraffe pattern. Why do I do this to myself? At least my dad loves and supports me in all, uh, all my project- yeah, he hates jet skis. At least the electrical box is all clean and organized. Alright, enough procrastinating, let's deal with this deep water horizon. Well, after an hour of scooping and sponging, the oil spill is all cleaned up. Literally one and a half gallons. I mean, there's a dedicated oil tank, you don't just dump it straight onto the engine, I don't think. Final thing to remove before I can start cleaning is the variable trim system. This silicone isn't doing anything, is it? It has been a couple days of oily scrubbing, but I finally have the entire hull interior clean. It's pretty satisfying, so I'm going to throw in an epic cleanliness montage. God, no wonder I don't have a girlfriend. Okay, you get the point, that's enough. Seriously though, look at the difference. I hope that the engineer who approved the use of these terrible gray fuel lines was fed to a seal. It seems the gasoline turned the lining to turquoise sludge. Pretty sure you don't want that in the carburetors. So out comes the fuel tank. And more cleaning. Gosh dang.
I didn't take any video or photo of the fuel line replacement process. Just take my word for it. It took about 2 hours and 18-ish feet of new fuel line. And click clamp pliers for the annoying fuel line clamps. Told you they'd make an appearance. Also, while the tank was out, I replaced the fuel level sensor float in the fuel sending unit because the magnet had fallen out of the old one. You bored of this photo yet? Alright, it's time to get these crusty old mats off. Hey guys, the name's Crusty Old Matt. Boom! I just drilled out all the rivets and yanked off Crusty Old Matt. Most action he's seen in years. Yeah, it's pretty gross on Odell. Okay, much better. I discovered a sweet trick for restoring faded plastic using a heat gun. That right half has been heat gunned. Just set the heat gun to low so you don't melt or burn the plastic. The plastic still looks kinda grimy, so I dressed her up all purdy, covered her in my feces a uh, rubbing compound, and polished her up real nice. Pure sex. Wash, wash, clean, clean nish. Jet skis give you a bigger penis. I have a dilemma. I love the sweet 90s retro look, but the graphics are starting to peel and fade. So a few hours with a heat gun and a razor blade got her down to her birthday suit. I actually kinda like this minimalist look, but I have a better idea. I got this idea from YouTuber Steve Vigas, Vi Vigas, Vigas, Vigas? DIY graphics for under $20 using adhesive craft vinyl. I call it the funky giraffe of wet hot speed. Slap some fresh hydro turf mats on there and she's looking halfway decent. I thought it would be easy to find a cheap used jet ski trailer, but boy was I wrong. Even the used ones cost upwards of a thousand bucks. Time to take advantage of the magic of Harbor Freight. 400 bucks and 8-ish hours of assembly produced this surprisingly sturdy utility trailer. There are tons of videos reviewing this trailer, so I'm not gonna go into it, but I will say that it's definitely a trailer. But it's not a jet ski trailer. Not yet. As my grandfather used to say, every boat trailer needs a winch. So again, Harbor Freight to the rescue. I bolted the winch to a stack of pressure-treated 2x4s, drilled a few holes in the trailer frame, then bolted on the whole winch assembly. For the bunks, I just stapled some cheap high-traffic rug to some pressure-treated 2x6s. My first iteration didn't have the cross supports, and when loaded with the jet ski, they were floppier than a hot dildo. The cross supports add a good amount of rigidity. I wanted the bunks to be removable so that I could slap a sheet of plywood on the trailer and use it as a utility trailer, so I just pinned the whole bunk assembly in place with clevis pins. Boom! Jet ski on a trailer. It doesn't get much more exciting than this, folks. And she's all bundled up, ready for winter. Time to move into the basement and get to work on a complete engine teardown and rebuild. But that's part two, so I'll see you- wait. Damn it, I'm not done editing yet. I still have to add in the part about the- Check it out, I bought a garden cart from Harbor Freight and turned it into a jet ski cart so I can pretend it's a motorcycle and also fit it through this narrow ass gate. Okay, sick dope, word up me bro, see you in part two. <laughs>